The Birth and Infancy of Mary. Details about Jesus' family life. So, picture this. Jerusalem. So Anna conceived. Celebration. And then proclaimed, Lord, please accept what's in my womb, for I am consecrating it to your service. For you surely know and hear all things. And during her nine month after coming to full term, Anna gave birth. What have I born? She asked the midwife. The midwife answered, A little girl. And Anna cried out, Today my soul is magnified. Lord, I have brought forth a daughter and named her Mary. Protect her and all of her children from that accursed one, Satan. Yeah, I said it. Then she lay down. <laughs> and when the time of her purification had passed, Anna began to nurse the child. Then, on the eighth day, they named her Mary, as the angel had instructed them, for her name will never fade. I think that's what her name means. And the girl grew more robust with each day that passed. Now, when she was uh, six months old, her mother set her on the ground to see if she could but stand on her feet. And after making seven steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps, she returned to her mother's lap. Then Anna lifted her up and exclaimed, As my Lord is the living God, you will no more walk upon this ground until such time as I take you to the Lord's temple. So from that day on, she didn't touch her. And then converted Mary's nursery. So Anna then converted Mary's nursery into a sanctuary and allowed nothing defiled or polluted to pass through. Mm -hmm. well, she doesn't know what she was doing. She, she didn't, meaning the, in the making of the living aqua covenant, she just know that's what she's supposed to do, but she, no, no idea. Right? That in the making of this, it's almost the foreshadowing. Her of, heart was there. If you look at how the aqua corn was made, right? Whoever instructed them to make was exactly like that. Right. It had to be certain way. It had to be holy. It had to be can't be like you right. know. Right, right. The so same thing was happening here. Right. But she she has, she knows she she's doing that without even knowing she's doing it. You know what I mean? That's crazy. You, you told me this like long time ago, and I couldn't see in my head. But I'm like reading this. I'm like, dude, that's exactly what you told me a long time ago. It's awesome. She was always kept from sin. And then converted Mary's nursery into a sanctuary and allowed nothing defiled or polluted to pass through. Then Anna sought assistance from the Jewish virgins. And they took Mary to themselves, serving her, caring for her, and keeping her amused. So that sounds like like nuns, like Catholic nuns, you know, Jewish virgins. And on Mary's first birthday, Joachim readied, oh, a great banquet and invited all the priests, teachers of the law and the elders, even the entire nation of Israel. Remember what happened to him? Now it's like completely flipped over. Wow. And he presented the girl to the priests who blessed her saying, God of all fathers, bless this child and give her an illustrious reputation that shines eternally throughout the generations. And all who were there replied, Amen, Amen, Amen. From there, they took her over to the chief priests who blessed her, saying, God of the highest heaven, 
Look upon this little girl and grace her with a perfect and unsurpassable blessing. Then her mother took her into her nursery and suckled her there, singing the song to the Lord. I will praise the Lord with a song, for he has come and cleared me of the dishonor heaped upon me by my enemies. And the Lord has given me virtue in its full fruitage, unparalleled yet everywhere before him. Who will proclaim to the sons of Reuben that Anna is nursing? Listen closely to tribe, you twelve tribes of Israel. Anna is nursing. <laughs> and then placed she, she placed Mary to sleep on her bed in her recently enshrined nursery and then returned to serve at the feast. <laughs> After the banquet, they left rejoicing and praising the God of Israel. The child grew apace as the months went by. When she was two years old, Joachim said, let's take her up to the Lord's temple. For we made a promise which we must fulfill. Otherwise, the Lord might curse us and refuse our offering. But Anna said, We should wait until the three years have passed. Yeah, we should wait. So the girl will no longer yearn for father and mother, you see. Wouldn't that be better? Joachim said, Very well, we can wait. And when the child had turned three years old, the time, which was the time allotted for her weaning, had run out. That's like me. I, you know, we fed our, them to three years old. Yeah. So Joachim said, "Summon the Jewish virgins and light a torch for each of them." Wow, this sounds just like Revelations. Summon the Jewish virgins and light a torch for each of them so that the girl might not return heart and mind distracted from the temple of the Lord. So he says, Summon the Jewish virgins and light a torch for each of them so that the girl might not, might not return heart and mind distracted from the temple of the Lord. They just didn't want, you know... You know how it is when your kids first leave you and they're like, you know, you, you, you just, I, I was, you're just getting ready for the heartbreak, you know. Joachim and his wife Anna gave all diligence to this right up to the time that they reached the Lord's temple with the sacrifices that had brought to the offer God. There they entered the young Mary into the Society of Virgins. Society of Virgins. Sounds just like a nun convent, where the other virgins stayed, praising God both night and day. Now around the temple and before its doors were 15 steps to climb, which corresponded to the 15 psalms of ascent. Yes, ascend the stairs, 15 stairs. Okay. Look that up. That's interesting. And the temple was built into the mountain in such a way that the altar for burnt offerings being outside could not be approached except by these stairs, I guess. Yeah, so these are the only stairs that could get you into the temple because the temple was built in such a way into the mountain that the altar for the burnt offerings being on the outside could only be approached this way, no other way. And the holy and Virgin Mary's parents placed her on the first step before the temple doors. And according to the practice, they went to change out of their traveling clothes and into some very nice and clean clothes. 
But meanwhile, the Lord's Virgin, not needing anyone to help her or lead her, ascended all of the steps one by one so quickly that she did not even look behind, nor did she seek out her parents as other children typically do. Like, this was completely unexpected. Anyone would have thought her to be of a proper age, but she was just three years old. She was so mature for her age. The priest then hugged and blessed Mary. The Lord has magnified your name throughout the generations, he said. For at the close of this age, the Lord will unveil his plan to deliver all of the tribes of Israel through you. Then the priest placed her on the third step of the altar, right? So there's 15 steps up, and then the plate, and then another three steps. Up. Then the priest placed her on the third step of the altar, and the Lord filled her with such joy that her feet started dancing. And all of the families of Israel adored her. Her parents, who had each been running and round, looking anxiously for the children until they found her in the temple, were equally amazed. Now that doesn't sound that, that her parents, who had each been running around, looking anxiously for the child until they find her in the temple, were equally amazed. That sounds like what Mary did to Jesus when Jesus was at the temple. Wow! Wow, people! Fascinating! The priests were also taken aback. This was how the Lord chose to bring to pass this wonderful work. Pay attention, y'all. This is amazing. To show forth the greatness, greatness that the virgin would one day come to embody by means of this marvel done in her childhood. So all this is is is, is huge spoiler alerts if you pay attention. Easter eggs. <laughs> then Anna, filled with the Holy Spirit, said before them all, The all-powerful Lord, the God of hosts, has come to visit his people in holiness and benevolence, being ever mindful of his word, to cut to size the hearts of the Gentiles, who have been rising up against us, and convert them to himself. Glory be to God. And he has unstopped his ears to hearken to our prayers and has silenced the gloating of our enemies. The burden one, the barren one, are you hearing me? The, are you, the barren one has become a mother, bringing forth joy and celebration to Israel. Are you hearing me? For beyond the gifts that I have brought to offer to my Lord, and powerless were my adversaries to stop me. For you see, God has opened their hearts to me and given me eternal gladness. End of the evil cycle. And after her parents had offered up their sacrifices and completed their pledge, it's a pledge, pledge, even as the law directs, they, they, they you know, they walked her up to the altar and the evening's over. They left the virgin in the temple housing with the other virgins who were to be brought up there, right? That's the tradition. And they returned to their own home, exalting in the Lord, amazed that the girl did not turn back. Did you see that, Daddy? Yes, Mommy. Did you see that? She did. She did. We didn't have to worry at all. No, we didn't. 
Now it was during that same year that Anna was widowed. All right, guys, audience, listen up. This is fascinating stuff. This is going to clear up a lot for you. Listen up. I even drew you a diagram. All right. No. All right. Listen up. Now, it was the year, same year that Anna, you know, after this whole celebration, same year, Daddy died. Anna was widowed. All right. I'm about to paint you a picture of Jesus' family. All right? Start centered around Anna. All right? So not Mary yet, not Jesus yet. Centered around Anna. Anna has a sister. Her name is Emerina. All right? So if you look in the picture, Emerina here is the mother of Elizabeth. And we know who that is who brought forth John the Baptist. Got it? Okay, great. Now, here's where it gets a little complicated, people. This kind of reminds me of that um, question that the Pharisees asked, like, if, you know, you're widowed and then you have to go with another man and then, you know, seven men later, who's in heaven? Like, right, dude, Leanna is the living example of this. Like, forget Elizabeth Taylor. All right, here we go. All right. After that year, Joachim had passed away. Now, Anna, I mean, come on, Mary's gorgeous, beautiful, queen of the most beautiful, beautiful. Can you imagine where she got it from? Anna, because she was so beautiful, the mother of the blessed Mary was so beautiful, she married Cleophas by order of the Lord, all right? So the Lord ordered her to marry again. The second husband is named Cleophas, C-L-E-O, like Cleopatra, but not yet, P-H-A-S, Cleophas, all right. Now, within a year of getting married to Cleophas, she bore a second daughter, all right. Well, we're going to name her Mary, of course. All right. <laughs> George, 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 right? Okay. Anna then gave this Mary of Cleophas over to Mary to get to Alpheus to wed. Okay. So now Mary number two, a.k.a. A a Mary of Cleophas. was got married later on to Alpheus. All right. Sounds familiar, right? And she later bore him a son, two sons in fact. First one was James, son of Alpheus. Ah, uh, now it sounds familiar. And also Philip, his brother, son of Alpheus. Right? Okay. Now, her second husband, Cleophas, also died. Yeah. Before the child could be born. So, like, pretty quick. All right. <laughs> so, she had two sons on her second marriage, James and Philip. All right. To her second husband, Cleophas. All right. I'm telling you, Elizabeth oh, Taylor had nothing in her. Oh, here we go. So, after her second husband dies, and now as an angel commanded her to take on a third husband, by whom she bore her third daughter. Okay, Salome. Whoa, jet lag. So I sound familiar. Yeah, da, da, da. Salome whom she would also refer to as, can anybody guess, Mary. <laughs> All right, so Mary number one, Mary number two, Mary number three. All right, so Salome, Mary, also got married. Anna then gave her to in marriage to Zebedee. Sound familiar? I'm telling y'all, fascinating. All right. Anna then gave 
Salome marry in marriage to Zebedee, through whom she bore the sons of Zebedee, also known as James and John the Evangelist. Wow, guys. Fascinating. I drew you a picture. Have fun.